Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Shuttleworth. I'm the chief executive of Canonical, which is the company behind the Ubuntu open source operating system. Uh, uh, Ubuntu is uh, quite widely uh, recognized as the leading platform for public cloud computing. Uh, and I'll be talking today about a subject uh, dear to my heart, which is the challenges of software operations complexity in the modern era. Uh, this is an important uh, problem for us to be focused on, uh, not just in the telco sector, but in uh, across all sectors, because in the world of open source, the friction that prevents adoption and consumption uh, is no longer licensing costs. Software is freely, freely available. Um, the friction is operations. If organizations can't onboard software, if they can't integrate software, if they can't operationalize software, then they can't get the benefit of it. Um, and so we see an enormous amount of incredible software being published um, in the open source world from a very wide uh, a, a number of companies. Uh, from the very large, you know, Googles, Microsofts, Amazons of the world through to the very specialized, the Netflixes, the Ubers, the Twitters of the world, um, all the way up to, to the, the, the ultra specialized uh, and, and boutique. Um, but all of that software has to be integrated, has to be onboarded. Uh, and so that's why uh, we have such a deep interest in, in improving the state of the art in software operations. Um, so I'll be talking about software defined everything and the, the management of the complexity in a sort of software defined everything world. Um, the, uh, the key promise, of course, of software defined everything is agility, right? You get all of these functions, uh, you can change those functions much faster, uh, you can decouple and disaggregate hardware from software. The risk is that operating that software is, is dramatically more complex or challenging uh, for, for any institution. Uh, if we look at the sort of enterprise compute continuum, we, we identify four fundamental um, platforms where, where enterprise compute takes place. Um, public cloud, uh, private cloud, micro cloud is a new uh, concept gaining traction, the idea that you have many small clouds in physically distributed places, in retail, you know, a half rack at the back of every store, uh, in oil and gas, a half rack on every drilling rig or, or um, uh, 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 gas station. Um, and, and then, of course, the Internet of Things, which is a, a, a very broad collection of disparate functions uh, where you don't have the, the sort of ideas of clustering and, and high availability. Uh, Telco, of course, presents a similar sort of continuum. We do see a lot of interest in public cloud operations on, on Telco, and we see a lot of that as Ubuntu, which, which leads in public cloud. Um, and then, of course, you see these same primitives in core, in edge, mech, fog, uh, and out to the distributed unit CPE, IoT, uh, sort of single point of failure world. Um, each of these four areas has its own operating zen, its own kind of character. Uh, and we have to find the right sort of primitives to, to be effective in each of these environments. But simplistically, you know, three of them you can really call clouds and then you have things. Uh, and so I wanna zoom in a little bit on, on the cloud story and just look at what's going on there. And the first challenge, of course, is that we're seeing a layer cake um, of, 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 of abstractions being laid on top of traditional software operations, right? We started with physical compute, and we then saw virtualization, the emergence of public cloud around virtualization as a primary construct. Uh, and in more recent years, containerization, so another layer of, of abstraction, another place where applications can be deployed. It doesn't replace the underlying layers, it adds to them. And we're just at the beginning of the next wave, which is serverless or, or the function layer effectively um, in, in cloud speak. Um, and in each of these layers, there are, is an exploding number of applications. You know, we still see more new applications designed for the bare metal world, uh, even though, you know, those other layers exist. Uh, today, you're probably wanting to operate your machine learning infrastructure, your observability, your operations infrastructure, your transcode, your real-time RAM, software-defined RAM uh, is going to want to be on, on physical plant. 
Um, at the virtual layer, we see a, a big shift of the enterprise to you know, cloud-based virtualization, a, a bunch of VNFs for both core and edge functions. And of course, if you're going to operate a, a container service, a Kubernetes, then that's going to run here at the virtual layer. So again, we, we keep seeing new services being added in these traditional layers. The contain, container layer is exploding. Um, uh, if you're going to operate containerized network functions, they will be at this layer. ML ops is all happening at this layer. Um, uh, there's there's a, you know an, an acceleration of new service creation, definition, discovery, uh, and so on in this container layer, none of which obsoletes fundamentally the stuff that came before, which is still there and which is expanding. Uh, and we'll see the same at the serverless layer as well. Um, to add to that complexity, we're seeing a shift to microservices. And microservices are great for developers. Developers love microservices, but operations people are now essentially having to manage many parts just to have seen, uh, achieve the same function. So if you look at your billing database in 2005, you had essentially three pieces of software that had to be integrated and they'd be running on two machines, but, but really just three pieces of software uh, 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 on two machines. Uh, that same function today, uh, is a big data function because uh, you're keeping track now not just of calls, but calls and messages and uh, in some cases flows on the internet. Um, and so that's an enormous amount of data. It requires a big data, data, big data database. And so a real world example um, of a modern telco billing database at 20 pieces of software. Uh, and of course that is scale out. So now instead of having three pieces of software on two machines, we've got 20 pieces of software spread across 60 machines. And if you just think about each of those applications on a single machine as a software component that has to be installed, has to be configured, has to be integrated, has to be updated, has to be patched, it has to be upgraded. Uh, uh, and all of that has to work for the whole thing to work, right? So if you just try to add up the amount of complexity, six moving parts in 2005, 1200 moving parts in 2020, We've essentially seen a 200x explosion in software operations complexity in 15 years. And nobody talks about that with the sort of with the with the fear of God that they really should have, right? This is a this is an incredible shift in complexity that we've all just sort of assumed we'll we'll, we'll be able to absorb and address with our existing thinking and our existing tooling. And so if you look over the last couple of years of NFE, I, I think you'll agree, right, that this escalating complexity and complexity in the number of layers, the number of functions, the number of microservices, and the scale of all of that is generating a wave of complexity. And that complexity is a killer to people's ambitions for uh, NFE and, of course, everything else that we aspire to do. So what can we do about it? Well, our area of interest is model-driven operations. You know, instead of instead of requiring each function to be understood and onboarded, uh, and uh, you know, expertise to be created in all of the details of that specific piece of software and how it should be integrated with custom integration code per institution, you know, can we essentially come up a level and and express our intention at the application layer rather than expressing the details uh, of what we want? Uh, when we look at the problems, the pain points. Uh, they're very universal, not just in telco, but across many sectors. They all have to do with the fact that, you know, every app has different configuration files. Um, every app has unique update and upgrade processes. Every vendor has different packaging. There's details of networking. Uh, and then as you onboard that, you end up with scenario-specific configurations that you have to manage, your production, your staging, your development, and so on. Um, you have service dependencies between those. You end up with custom integration code because everybody's not running the same software there. They're mixing and matching the same components, but in different ways. Um, the fact that you have different people involved um, in each layer of the stack, physical, virtual, container, and function, uh, and the fact that you know, different clouds aren't exactly the same, A applications need to be optimized and tuned and tweaked you know, to get the most out of Google or the most out of Microsoft or the most out of Amazon or the most out of VMware. Um, so, so all of that is driving this pain. One of the things that's very sort of obvious when you do this across a lot of organizations is that the pictures people paint are exactly the same, regardless of the layer. And so that's really the heart of the inspiration for, for, for this work um, in, in model-driven uh, uh, model operations. 
can we essentially represent um, institutional intention um, in the form of saying, look, these are the components that I want to integrate. These are the places that I want to integrate the film. I may have high level configuration on those that's all standardized in its, in its, in its form and, and its approach and its, and its um, uh, articulation. Uh, but then let software and technology handle the mapping from this picture down to the underlying uh, details. And so, you know, idiots like me could do fun things like deploy um, Hadoop or deploy Kubernetes or deploy uh, Kubeflow for AI ML inference um, and training uh, just by drawing pictures like this. Um, uh, this box we would call a model and those individual pieces we would call charms or operators. Now, the operator term comes from the Kubernetes world where this idea, you know, gets bandied about as, as the operator pattern. Clearly, whoever did that doesn't deal with telcos because explaining operators to operators is no fun at all. But when I talk about charms, I'm really talking about a package of operations code, uh, a package of code that can be reused across many organizations that encapsulates and distills everything that an expert administrator knows about that software so that I can just draw these pictures and that package of code will then essentially handle the application lifecycle and management. All of this is powered by what's known as an operator lifecycle manager, and Juju is a model-driven operator lifecycle manager. So it is the it's where this idea of modeling is is implemented. Inside that charm, you have all of the operations code, not just for lifecycle management of the application, but also for the everyday operations. How do I back it up? How do I check its health? How do I scan for viruses? How do I restore it? You know, each piece of software has a set of things that admins have to do on a regular basis. And those are encapsulated in the charm or the operator. And of course, the code for integration so that different institutions aren't rewriting uh, 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 um, integration code from scratch. Um, so uh, uh, what do we get in the end? We get reusability. We get the idea that this package of you know, the code that drives a database or code that drives a messaging system can be used in many different software topologies to achieve many different scenarios, many different purposes. Uh, and ultimately we get this idea that we can dramatically change the quality of software operations and the cost of software operations through reuse. We can reuse the same uh, package of operations code effectively across different organizations, across different industries, across different scenarios, across different clouds, and even different layers in that, in that cloud stack, as it were. Uh, now, all of this is um, uh, captured in that Juju uh, operator lifecycle manager. Um, and so that's a project worth checking out, an open source project worth checking out. And you can see a bunch of telcos in there. Um, that's because Juju is both used to drive OpenStack uh, when Canonical and other companies uh, deliver it, um, but it's also used inside an, um, uh, an open source effort by Etsy, the Etsy standards body, to create an open source management and operations system, Mano system, to, to use with Etsy NFE. So OSM, Open Source Mano, implements uh, model-driven operations uh, for telcos following the Etsy NFE um, architecture and standards. Now, I didn't have time to, to capture everything that I'm interested in on complexity management in IoT, uh, but if, uh, if we're able to connect uh, for live Q&A right now, I will be happy to take questions there. Otherwise, um, I hope you're having a very good conference and I look forward to either your questions or to, to some sort of follow-up discussion if this is interesting to you too. Uh, my colleagues uh, in, in South Africa, elsewhere, would be, would be delighted to connect us. Thank you very much.